observing photosynthesis in Eladea, stretching a spring by hanging weights from it, and dissolving sugar in water at different temperatures are all classic experiments that I've made my students do in the past. But since then, I've learned that we can get more out of practical work by thinking differently about how we approach it, and so designing lessons which are more effective for learning. Practical work is often seen as an intrinsic part of science education. As one teacher put it, science without practical is like swimming without water. Now practical inquiry, observing natural phenomena, and making use of standard scientific techniques are a large part of what professional scientists do. So these things should play a part in learning science at school. Besides, practical lessons are popular with both students and teachers. But here's a thought. What if our students really like practical lessons because they're easier than doing theory? And what if we teachers like practical lessons because they keep our students busy so they're easier for us? Now, if we're not challenging our students sufficiently, we ought to be worried. But that couldn't possibly be the case, could it? Well, as good science teachers, we ought to look at the evidence, and that's exactly what I've been doing. Practical work is often ill-conceived, confused and unproductive. For many children, what goes on in the laboratory contributes little to their learning of science. The emphasis is often on doing rather than thinking, and little or no time is set aside for discussion, argument and negotiation of meaning. Ouch. I found some of the research quite shockingly critical, but at the same time it was quite helpful and constructive in getting me to reassess the way I teach. If you go to the Nuffield Foundation website for this film, you'll find links to the original research, and it's well worth taking a look. What you'll find are some careful distinctions. For example, some of the researchers found that practical lessons were generally effective in getting students to do what was intended with physical objects. What that means is that students can follow instructions and produce the expected results. Other research found that practical work was much less effective in getting students to use the intended scientific ideas to guide their actions and reflect upon the data they collect. So the research seems to indicate that students are fairly good at following instructions in practical lessons, but they're less good at using their scientific knowledge to explain their findings. Now, none of this means that practical lessons are a waste of time, but perhaps many of us aren't using them as well as we could. As is so often the case in education, we could deliver far more effective teaching if we learnt from each other and from best practice. So let's go look at an example. You might get your students to do something like this as an experiment for them to observe that sugar is more soluble in water at higher temperatures and then get them to explain that observation using their knowledge of the particle theory of matter. You might give them a worksheet with instructions on how to set up the apparatus, how to collect the results and an instruction for them to think about why what they observe happens. So there is a problem with this approach which is that by the time the students have got all the apparatus out carried out the experiment and packed it all away again, you've left very little time to discuss what you've stated is the main objective of the lesson. A better way of meeting that objective might be to do this as a demonstration, thereby leaving plenty of time to discuss with your students the scientific ideas involved. But that's not to say that doing something like this as a whole class practical can't be useful. It's just a case of matching the practical to an appropriate objective. You could use that practical to improve your students' skills in designing investigations. So you could set them the task of thinking about how best to measure out the sugar, how to record their results, and how to decide whether the sugar was still dissolving or not. So if your lesson objectives are to do with investigation design, then whole class practical might be the best way to go. Another approach might be to start off your lesson with a discussion of the theory and get your students to make predictions 
and then use the practical to test their predictions and reinforce their understanding. So there you go, that's three different ways to use the same practical to meet three different learning objectives. This is a fire piston and it's one of my absolute favourite science demonstrations. Science teachers love things like this because they provoke fascination, inspire wonder and get our students asking questions about the way the world works. Practical work in general is a fantastic tool for developing our students' enthusiasm and interest in the subject. But most of the time we ought to be using practical work to meet specific learning objectives and we need to be clear about what those objectives are and most importantly how the practical work helps our students to meet those objectives. Now it might not be easy for most of us to admit that the way we do practical work isn't as well planned or as effective as it could be. But as science teachers we need to look to the evidence and not rely on anecdote or personal experience. Reading the research for myself made me think deeply about the way I do practical work with my students. Take a look for yourself and see what conclusions you've come to.